Okay, so we've got something slightly different in today. A big Airtop Evo 40. So this is Aaron's uh, Airtop. Uh, a bit of an accident, so uh, it's, it's quite new. Um, he had fit it, it was, it was working, and all he had to do was tidy up the wiring. And in that process, he accidentally shorted the uh, fuel pump line. And now it's moaning it's got a fuel pump fault. Well, a replacement ECU for this is 20 quid shy of 600 quid. So it's £580 for uh, a replacement ECU for this. Uh, and seeing as these aren't as common as uh, your common garden variety Thermotop C, it's not like you can just get a cheap one off eBay. So uh, let's hope we can fix it and save him 500 plus quid. So yeah, just checked uh, for the replacement costs and well, hopes it's a bit cheaper than, than that now on offer. Um, that's the damage if, uh, if, if, if it can't be fixed. So you might as well say it's still £500 of damage really. Um, so let's hope we can help Aaron out and uh, save him lots of money. Okay, so after having the unit quickly on test, we've stripped down. It does seem to have a pump problem. Everything else uh, is fine. So we will whip the board over to the bench. Okay, so we're back at the bench. We have the CU. Now this one is the the pump. I've already uh, split all the um, clips. And I must say that this newer unit is is very much cheaper um, on the older air tops, and that it was a proper aluminium housing both sides, and that now it's just a cheaper clip together plastic unit. So. Well, these manufacturers find ways of doing it for cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. So, air top board. Mm. Here we have it. So, let's get, let's get down a bit closer. Okay. So, where's my tweezers? So, this is temperature. Oh, this is temperature sensor, and this smaller one here is the hall sensor that senses the fan go round. So, gotta be careful with that. So, this is the pins in question. Um, uh, the MOSFET drive for that is. Here, that MOSFET controls the pump, I do believe. Uh, you've got drive for glow plug and, and fan and stuff there. So th this MOSFET definitely, I believe, is control. Oh, it could be this. Well, nothing to start looks like an issue. Let's have it. Oh, what's that? What's this? Focus. What is this? Okay. Okay, that's that's not pretty. So we we'll have a burn around that connector. Let me get some acetone. Clean the mask off. Oh yeah, didn't it? Now of course there's no schematics for these. You know, Robasto won't release that. They want you to buy a new one at over £500. Let's see what we've got. Ah. Oh. 
Hmm, let's see how close I can get you in on this. Not the best. However, you'll make out that there's a small copper mark and if you look at the left hand pin you can see that there's a trace going from the pad to a wire. I believe that there may have been a trace there that's blown, it's acted like a fuse. As Aaron said he uh, shorted out the pump. Now of course the, dri the MOSFET driver has got an 8 amp current limit and short circuit protection and all that good stuff but that track can't take 8 amps. There's no way if that was a track it could take 8 amps. So we're going to have to get that under the microscope. So I'll just do that. Okay so a little bit of uh, handheld so sorry for the shake. So we have the uh, board under dusty but trusty so that I can show you in the uh, in the microscope. Let's see if we can get a a decent picture of that. So what it looks like is like the left one has the trace going to the via. Um, if we move the microscope down and get a good view of that just a moment while I adjust. There we go. So let's get in with the camera now. So as you can see there what seems to have happened is as it shorted it blew the trace. Well let's hope that anyway um, because otherwise this pin goes into the board and being a four layer board uh, that would probably render the board useless. So there's the actual, um, let's see if we can get even further in can but try. Clean the image, there we go, it's a decent image. So yeah, yeah there was definitely a trace there. It seems to have blown itself clear. So what I'm going to do is scrape back a little bit of the copper on the ground plane and going to use A really really fine piece of wire. I think it's point two. So if I'm wrong, it would blow the wire and act as a fuse. If I'm correct and the pump works, then I will restrip it and we'll solder that properly with the proper link there. But that definitely looks like uh, the trace has blown. So hopefully, hopefully. Fingers, toes, and clitoris is uh, crossed. That that's all it is. So that could be. See, that's that's the left pin there. That could be what's classed as a weak spot uh, in the way Basto designed that it blew the track. At the end of the day, the MOSFET that's running this. Uh, has an 8 amp current limit. Now there's no way that trace can take 8 amps so it acted like a fuse um, whereas if if that was properly soldered into the ground plane then the MOSFET would have uh, shut down with its uh, overcurrent and short circuit protection but as it is, if they used a link to it and the link blew, well that renders the board useless. So did Webasto do that on purpose? Or was it just a design error? I mean when we uh, when we proper look down from the microscope you can see that uh, yeah it's absolutely tiny as a uh Ooh. Focus. Absolutely tiny there. Um, I mean, it's quite hard to see by the eye, but um, definitely, uh, definitely, we can see that's what's happened in the microscope. 
Okay, so we'll solder the link. Well, I'll quickly solder a link. Um, um, we'll be back for a quick test run of the way Basto. I don't think you need to see me solder it, it's so simple. So there we go. <coughs> not not the prettiest solder joint at the minute, but it's just for test. So yeah, wire from the ground and we've strung it over and into that joint just for test for now. Obviously it would be a better solder joint later if it works. Let's hope it works. Okay, so that's all rebuilt. Uh, obviously we don't test on the machine. This is a completely different unit. Um, so I have it up on thermo test. So we're just going to give the combustion fan a quick whiz at 2000 and then 5000. So we'll test that first. So there's 2000 on the fan. Then we'll wear it up to 5000. So, what everybody wants to know, did the pump repair work? We activate the pump. It certainly does. So that's a successful diagnosis. So we'll pop back to the bench, remove that little wire link and do a proper solder job on that connector and um, reassemble and that goes home now. I'm sure Aaron will be very pleased that he doesn't have to pay 500 plus quid to have his have his unit that uh, that has been powered in total five and a half hours. It's absolutely brand new so um, as a result there so back to the bench okay so the work is uh, complete so we just show you again in the microscope now I was thinking to bridge it with solder um, and then I thought well what happens if uh, if for some godforsaken reason that same situation happened so we decided to yeah just insert a 3 amp link so there it is nicely soldered in so now it goes back together okay so that's it all put back together <coughs> So we'll use a, a component test, so we'll test the fan at 5000. Good, and the most important thing, the fuel pump. And there we have it, the fuel pump working nicely again. So I'm sure Aaron will be pleased with all of that and it will be boxed back up and sent back to him. <laughs>